Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. This week we continue our journey west through northern Arizona as we stop in Flagstaff for a couple days and then head over to Lake Havasu City. Join us as we explore these two cities and try dispersed camping for the first time. Weatherford Hotel, one of the landmarks here in downtown Flagstaff. It's a hotel that's been around for since 1887, so it's probably one of the ones that was built when the railroad came through here to serve the people on the trains. From the time of its opening, the Weatherford has been a downtown centerpiece. For many years, it was the finest hotel in town and housed such famous guests as Zane Gray, William Randolph Hearst, Theodore Resident. So behind me is the Flagstaff Railroad uh, Station. It was built in 1926 and it was used by the Santa Fe Railroad. 1992 the city of Flagstaff acquired the building and is now used as an Amtrak station and as a visitor center. Now, interesting the city of Flagstaff was incorporated because of the Intercontinental Railroad that was built from St. Louis, Missouri to the West Coast. And they needed to have a place, you know, stations and such along the way. And so they essentially put a station here and, and this became the city of Flagstaff. Mm -hmm. This is a church of the Nativity. Established in 1888, it was the first Catholic church in Flagstaff. The church was moved to this site in 1911. So what did you think of downtown Flagstaff? Um, it's okay. I mean, it has some, um, you know, neat old buildings. Yeah, there's a lot of neat old buildings, a lot of little shops that if, you know, if it was a different time, we could stop and check them out right right and it seems to have a lot of bars and restaurants yeah yeah it was nice to visit it's always you know nice to visit places you've never been and cities you've never been into yeah that's nice it's small it's, it's easy to walk around right and the buildings a lot of them have plaques so you get a sense of the history oh yeah downtown and exactly. you know as you check out the old hotels and you know stores and um, churches and train station and such you get an idea of what this town was like at one time right and most are from the 1800s sometimes well late probably late 1800s yeah Right here at the KOA. It's pretty small. You can see if the, um, the next site is like right there. Um, you've got maybe, I don't know, 15 feet, 15 to 20 feet between you and your neighbors. It is nicely wooded. It's a gravel site, reasonably level. It's a little bit of a slope forward to back, but side to side it was okay. The one complaint I did have is the campground is fairly empty and they did park someone right next to us the first night, but they only spent the night and left, so that wasn't too bad. The price for this campsite is $40, it's electric only. Um, the water is turned off this time of year, so you, you don't get water. They do have a dump station and a water fill over by the dump station that you can use. So we did that when we came in, filled up the water tank and dumped our tanks, and we'll do that before we leave. Uh, you do have Wi-Fi and cable. We didn't hook into the cable. We did use the Wi-Fi, but it got really slow last night and was totally unusable, um, which I guess is expected. But it's working now this morning, so um, we can do, do check a few things as such. But that's pretty much the campsite.
this is our first time dispersed camping. We are at Lone Tree um, and we're out just outside of Lake Havasu, Arizona. Thank you, because I said it wrong. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what do you think of dispersed camping? Um, I really didn't know what it was. And uh, when you said it's in the desert, I'm like, really? Out in the desert? Yeah, you were thinking wild animals and... Uh-huh. You know, rattlesnakes, other wild animals. You know, we're coyotes. out by ourselves. Right. Somebody but, comes along, picks up Zephyr and takes her away. Right. But actually, this spot, there's many other RVs here. Yeah, I'd say there's at least 25 to 30. Yeah. And it's really just an open parking lot. Yeah, it's a gravel lot, really. Right. And I mean... It's, it's boondocking, so there's no hookups at all. But there right. are, it looks like they have fire pits. Yeah, there looks like people have put little fire pits together next to the campsites. Mm -hmm. So you can't see the people where I have campfires and such. But it, it's a uh, pretty good size. Yeah, and there's a, you know, there's a max of 14 days, so people aren't living here. Well, um, we think. I don't know about that. Yeah, it does look like a few people have been here a while. I mean, there's people over here that have a tiny house on wheels. That's true. That was kind so, of interesting. Uh, you know, they could be, but I doubt it because, I mean, where are you going to dump your RV? Right. You've got to pull it off the site eventually and, and take it someplace to refill, empty your tanks and refill your water, so. Right, right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, unless you have a generator or, like, lithium batteries or something. Right. You would run out of power. Yeah. Yeah, there's, that's the one thing I think there is a, you know, a number of people do sound to have generators and you hear them running, you know, like the people right next to us, you can probably hear it in the background, have a generator running and it's been kind of running all day. Mm -hmm. um, they do tend to shut them off at 10 o'clock, I don't know, they, they were off eventually last night. They didn't run all night, but they ran for a while. Right, in this spot, I mean, this, the uh, landscaping is beautiful. Yeah, all the mountains and such. And, uh, it's not far from Lake Havasu City, yeah. so, you know, you have really the best of both worlds. You're out, you know, out of the city, but you're close by the city in case, you know, you need groceries or gas or, you know, a restaurant. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it is a good way to extend your RV budget. Right. You know, right. you can do a few nights, you know, disperse camping and then mix that in with some campgrounds, so... You know, we can go six days or so without worrying about our tanks. So, you know, we could do, you know, five, six days of this, then go to a campground for a couple of days, you know, empty our tanks, fill up with water, do our laundry and such like that, go to another spot and then do it again, you know, and kind of break up the costs a little bit. Right, right. I mean, if you're on a, you know, a pretty limited budget and you're looking for some cheap overnight staying, yeah, this is... I think a perfect place. It's right on the main road. Yeah. So, you know, you're not, you know, too far inland. Yeah. And throughout the Southwest, there's a lot of places like this. So there's plenty of opportunities to find, you know, a place to, to disperse camp and save some money. Okay. <laughs> and Diane's losing her iPad. Because Zephyr is nudging me. She oh. wants attention. You just close. Ancha. Says, Here I am. Spoiled dog. Right. She says it's time for dinner. Is yeah. It time for dinner. Oh, goodness. Dusty. Something. That'd be the one thing. I mean, it is a little bit dusty here. Yeah, it is pretty I dusty. I mean, the whole area, I mean, even I, you know, it's kind of a gravel parking lot or gravel lot, but even the whole area, like when I went and walked a hike, uh, one of the trails through here, um, and that's just gravel. And even when you look out in the desert, you know, the desert ground is, is rock. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of rocks and, and such. So, you know, it, it would be dusty here. And, you know, you don't get much rain here in the southwest. So, Right, right. It was nice to see actually water uh, in Lake Havasu. Yeah, that's true. You don't see too many bodies of water <laughs> in this part of the country. Yeah. So that was, you know, kind of nice to see.
Well, today we're in Lake Havasu, Arizona. Like actually Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And behind us, you're gonna see the London Bridge. And this was the original run London Bridge that um, spanned the Thames River in London and was disassembled. Disassembled. <laughs> disassembled. Disassembled. It was disassembled in 1967 and moved here and reassembled and opened in 1971. It was done by, I don't know if he was the mayor of um, Lake Havasu City, but it was done basically to promote the city in this whole area that included this waterway. It was all put in place at that time, creating the island across from us over there. And it was done basically to create a, a tourist attraction or, or something unique for the city to help the city grow because at that time it was you know, kind of a young city. And a little, I don't know, unknown fact, or a little known fact is that the the main structure of the bridge was built new. Really what was brought over from London was the exterior bricks on the bridge. And so they were all brought over here and numbered and reassembled onto the bridge. Now a helicopter's going over. It's a nice area, somewhat touristy, but um, it's just yeah. I mean, you know, unless you're into the you know the spring break parties and such, you know, Lake Havasu City is really you know just a place to go and, and see the bridge and kind of walk around the shops and stuff. Maybe get a, a nice dinner and then or you know go to the stores if you need to do anything at a store. But that's really about it. Right. Yeah. It's called what was it called? The the village. The village shops. Yeah. It, it looked like kind of a party place if you're into parties they had uh, a lot of restaurants with outdoor well, cabanas seating. you could yeah all boats yeah cabana yeah. boats mm -hmm. yeah party For, boats if you if you like to party yeah there is the london bridge Hope resort yeah apparently there's a casino that you have to take a ferry to get to mm -hmm. um, and uh, it looked like they had condominiums you could you know rent yeah. Yeah, like for, a timeshare or Right, or for a week or a, a month or even if you're a snowbird. Yeah. You could come down and rent one of those. Yeah. So for our first experience in dispersed camping, I think it went pretty well. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely going to do this some more. Right. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the bell for notifications. We post new videos on a weekly basis and we'd love to have you follow along on our journey. And leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. See you down the road.